across the northern part of the country. This is scourge threatening Ghana's food security and ripping off the state of its badly needed revenue. Because of the bad road, that is why we are sending it to Togo. All our produce, we don't want it to go there, but we are forced to send it because of the nature of our road. Our road is very, very, very bad. Our road is no good. People are with money Accra because of the road. They don't want to come here and buy the things and they can't send it because on their way going, it will be suffering. So they don't like it that way. And for them, their road is good. Immigration and customs officials are compromised. We and the borders are put heads together. We pay the immigration one bag per 50 pesos. The custom one bag per two CD. And then there is Togo police too there. And the Togo the custom also there. All of them are taking money from us. So before you will get into Togo, you pay four destinations before you can get there. So roughly you can pay like 2,000 to 2,500. The deplorable roads have become a growing nightmare that haunts residents each day. All it takes to experience this is a drive on the breath-choking roads of Cherepone and its environs. But the poor state of roads in Cherepone is not entirely the main focus of this piece. There's another side of the story, one that is worrisome, one that the duty bearers have turned a blind eye to. It is the blatant plundering of the nation of its badly needed grains to neighboring countries in broad daylight. In the first quarter of this year, the president placed a restriction on the exportation of maize, rice and soya beans. Export of all grains must be accompanied by an approved export permit letter duly signed by the trade minister. But enforcement of this directive has been a challenge giving room for the smuggling of these grains out of the country. In this edition of Hotline Documentary, Joy News investigates how over 166 million cities worth of maize, rice, millet, soya beans, cowpea and sesame are smuggled to neighboring Togo and Nigeria last year alone using the Cherepone district as transit. The Joy News investigative team will be speaking to truck drivers, farmers and middlemen who aid the massive grain drain of the north. Cherepone is one of the six districts of the northeast region. Carved out of the Saboba Cherepone district in the late 2000s, the area still remains one of the deprived rural settings in the northern part of the country. But this is not the major source of worry for the over 80,000 inhabitants who are predominantly farmers. It is rather the dusty, bumpy, and unmotorable stretch linking Cherepone to Yendi and its environs. It is a difficult decision to make each day for many of the residents here. It is either one endures the misery of commuting on the roads to guarantee their survival or stay back home while their economic sustenance crumbles. One of such residents who has accepted the former is Kwame Kweku. But for the demands of his job, he would have avoided the frequent use of the road. Mm, it's very terrible when traveling on this road. In fact, Sometimes when you want to travel because of the bad nature of the road, it makes you like, I mean, just stop. Traveling in vehicles, I attempted once here. It was even difficult trying to hold your breath in the dust filled vehicles. How is the experience for you like? I'm using the vehicle from Tamale to uh, Chefone every day. In fact, there's no day, uh, no day we we'll come here and we we'll not go to fitter shop to go and maintain our bikers. Sometimes, the, 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 especially from the, our pulley coming to Cherpuni, 
in fact masa that one day is we can say about it this basket of frustrations carried by the thousands of residents in this district is summed in Kwame's bitter accounts he had to sleep in an open space for three days when a vehicle he was traveling in broke down on a trip on a road and got stuck in a gully. It is an experience that gets him emotional anytime he recalls. Are we not a Ghanaian? Or is Chepo not part of Ghana? <laughs> Kwame is not the only indigent whose emotional spots are hit hardest on the subject. For Bashiru Ali Danki, a resident in his early 40s, it represents the litany of broken promises made by the political class any time election approaches. He believes the duty bearers care little about their plight. Our road here as well. When you travel, it's like you wait, you're going to war. If you are not come back, you are not like you will not have life again. Because our road all is poor. So our governor is not my our my ass. We don't know either we part of Ghanaians or we're part of Togolese, we I don't know. There is potholes, potholes, and stones which are affecting our cars, our tires, our springs. So now, when you when you buy the soya beans, where do you take it to now? Now we send some to Ghana and we send some to Togo. Why do you send it to Togo? Because of the ro bad road. Because of the bad road. Meet Imoro Mustafa. He is the chairman of the cargo truck drivers here in Chereponi. He's part of the drivers who transport tons of soya beans to neighboring Togo. I caught him in the process of loading truckloads of these grains badly needed to feed the local poultry industry. He says their activities must be blamed on the poor roads and not their desire to make profit. We and the borders are put heads together. We pay the migration one bag per 50 pesos. The custom one bag per two CD. And then there is Togo police too there, and the Togo do, the custom also there. All of them are taking money from us. But these monies do they give you receipt? No, they don't give us any receipt. But what explanation do they give for taking 50 CDs and two CDs from you on every bag? Because they say it is their duty to bring the load back. Uh, the immigration said they, they will bring the, all the road down. For them to church in the car. And because we don't want to pay uh, twice, that's why we just pay them 50 CD and they get our way to go. And the custom people, they said it is their duty to take two CD. Traders in neighboring Togo, Nigeria, and Benin make juicy offers for Ghana soya beans, rice, and maize, among others. A bag of soya beans goes for 12 Ghana cities outside the borders of Ghana. The road is our major challenge because after production, we need markets. And there's good markets uh, down south, let's say Kumasi, Accra, Techimai, Takradi. There are already markets, but the road is affecting that greatly because we cannot transport our produce to those destinations. So therefore, it's affecting our production. We do understand that because of that, you are looking for alternative market in neighboring countries like Togo, Benin, Nigeria. Share more with us on this. Yeah, um, they have been a supportive to us. This neighboring country has been a supportive to us because after production, we cannot transport our produce into the country because of the poor or deplorable nature of the road. So they uh, sometimes come here and then buy from us because the road from here to the place is closer 
and they have better roots than us. I've come to meet Fuseni Munkaila, who is a farmer in Chirepone. He produces maize, soya, sesame and millet. He has been in the business for a decade. Like many farmers here, he is worried about the poor state of the roads. He says it is more expensive to transport their produce to local markets than neighboring countries. Unexpected expenses occur. So the amount that you expected at the end, I didn't get the expected amount because unexpected expenses occur. Food, water and transport to go and bring the mechanic and sending him back. And then the cost of mechanization. So um, from that day, I swear not to transport my produce from here in, inside Ghana again. And that is why Togo Beni uh, become alternative market for us. In terms of losses, if you use our roads, how much are we looking at? Um, in terms of uh, losses, when you use our road, assuming um, you are going with a load, let's say um, 50 ton, and by the time you get your, your destination, you can look like 20 to 25 percent of the total ton. The losses he makes are as a result of the poor road network. He corroborates Imoro's claim of immigration and customs officials demanding bribes from farmers transporting their grains to neighboring countries. He says border officials from Ghana and Togo extort at least 4,000 Ghana cities from him before his produce gets to the market in Togo. When you are transporting your goods, when you get to the custom barriers, you have to pay per bag. So if a bag, let's say, is one CD, and if you are going with 500 bags, um, it means you are paying 500 Ghana cities. And then in immigrations, they have a flat charge charging for us you pay like 300 Ghana cities per truck. And if you have a big truck, you can pay like 350. And um, that is the Ghana border. And when you get to the Togo border, you pay the same thing. Um, for the Togo, you can pay like 600 Ghana cities per truck. And they have two. Well, we have one called Konkombu. When you get there, there are uh, customs or immigrations there, you pay there. And when you are entering to Togo, there is another border there called Donye. Um, there too, you have to make another payment again. So before you get into Togo, you pay four destinations before you can get there. So roughly you can pay like 2000 to 2500 And do they give you receipt for such payment? The receipt, unless you request, if you don't request, you only pay and then you go. And sometimes if you also insist that um, you want to collect a receipt, you will get a different price and the price will go high. So because of uh, our fear of increasing the price, we do accept paying without receipts. According to data from the District Agric Office in Cherepone, in January 2021, 1 1.6 million city worth of soya beans was transported to Togo and Nigeria. In February, the figure shot up to 2.3 million cities. In March, the tons exported through Cherepone was 2.2 million Ghana cities. In April, it was 1.6 million Ghana cities and saw a decline in May, with recorded 635,000 cities of soya beans being sent to Togo. But cumulatively, the metric tons of maize, rice, millet, soya beans, cowpea and sesame transported to Togo and Nigeria stood at over 166 million cities. District Agri Director at Terepone, Pascal Asigri, says this can be reversed if the roads connecting the district to local markets are put in good condition. The roads leading to Cherepone are some of the terrible stretches to travel on in the country. Cherepone is a hub for aggregators or individuals who act as intermediaries for traders in other countries. Mohamed Rukaya is an aggregator for traders in Togo and Nigeria. She's paid 20 CDs on every bag of soya beans she buys. She says buyers in local markets are reluctant to do business with them because of the poor roads. People are doing their business. The road is no good. If they go three days later before they will come, maybe two days before they will come, 
and then because of that, the car, car, yeah, those cars that they support to come, because the road is no good, they don't come here. They normally go to uh, Kumasi and Tamale side and Yindi. They don't come to our place here. So we are begging and we are pleading that they should do the road good for us. About the business too, because our road is no good, we are buy we buy things here. We can't send it to Accra because of the road. So because of that, because of that, Togo people are coming here. We buy things and give it to them, and they will go. And the Nigerian people, all of them, they come here and buy because our road is no good. So that we export it to uh, Kumasi or Accra. So that's the reason why we are pleading with the government to do the road for us. Aiding the transfer of thousands of metric tons of soya beans to Togo and Nigeria is not a business Rukaya is proud of. Because whenever they need their goods, they call us. Already we are working with them, they have our numbers. So any goods that they need, they call us and tell us, oh, we need this so. Sometimes they can send us money, sometimes they will come with their money. So that we we'll send them around and buy the things and they will send it. Um, what is true? Um, how did you start with these Nigerians and Togo people with regard to this business? Because they had, we have things here, pharmacies are here when the farms is good for us. So they come here and then they look for those people who are measuring the things where they know they can get the things much. So they look for us and they will come to us. You can be there and one of them will just come. Oh, this person said you want to buy soybeans or rice. So then you contact with the person, how you take money from the person. So that you, whether you go yourself and buy the things and the person will bring the car and take it, or you go with the person so that you buy the things and he or she will come with the car and pick. He, he or she goes and send it. So how many of them do you buy, you know, soya for? How many of them? I buy for men and women. Let's say about five for them. The, the, uh, the men, you know, five for them. I buy things for them. The women to four. So normally they are goods, different, different. It's not the same thing that they need. So I can take the money and be buying. If I go to this village, I'll get this, I'll get this, I'll buy it and gather it and call them. So that they will come and pick and give me my commission. I'm talking about commission. <coughs> How much do they pay for commission? The commission, they are one bag when you measure in a sack, is forty bows. So you take twenty cities when you measure in one one sack. You take twenty cities and measure for the person. The Joy News investigative team caught up with Mahama Isa, another cargo truck driver was transporting bags of soya beans to Togo. He also confirms he has to bribe border officials through the journey. Okay. Now, then, then, then I carry a di Togo. They carry no soya beans in a mu. Inti, aya, yata se mudru border, aya omo hamo kakra, aya how ben na mu film se mudru border. How dare one say a quiet say? Oh, my fan say, yea, crum no moon pesa near mano. A quiet basse, ya yetihano, ya quenin ye. In two freca say one bra bafaca near ma. When you say, Charquani, when ya car, and tis a togo for an toa, a ya dinner cogana. It is not only the inhabitants lamenting over the current state of the road and its attendant toll on their lives. The local authorities say it is a worrying situation, but top government officials are working on getting the contractors on site. Muturi Kofi Ben is presiding member of the Tereponi District Assembly. It's a worrying situation. Honestly, um, you plied that road yourself coming to Tereponi, and you can attest to the fact that it's not good at all. But what I can actually testify or can say as far as uh, plans on it is concerned has to do with the fact that the Honorable DC, the MP and other top notches like the original minister uh, upon several engagements have made some effort to uh, making sure that the contractors 
come back to site to work on it. It appears the local assembly is prepared to stop the flight of thousands of metric tons of soya beans and other grains to neighboring Togo, Nigeria, and Benin. Is that before they leave Chirapwani, you know, as a presiding member, um, I am into this revenue tax force and all that. Before they leave, we, we collect our share of that. And also on their way, there is a checkpoint. We have SEPS customs checkpoint. So they also check on them before they, they, they cross to Togo. One hundred and sixty six million Ghana cities. That's the value of recorded revenue the state loses when the grains are transported. The cascading effect of this illegal business on the soya bean value chain is far region. The local poultry industry is the hardest hit because soya beans are key ingredients for the production of poultry feed. Maybe if the terrible roads are fixed, then the farmers, middlemen and others in this business would keep the grains on the local market. Thank you.